Hey, what's up fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and today we're playing a little game I'd like to call Same But Different. So I recently purchased a sweater quantity of yarn from you knit which is a knitting and sewing store here in toronto and the particular yarn that i picked up is bc garns lock lamond now this yarn is stunning it is 100 percent got certified organic wool and in a 50 gram skein you get 150 meters but it does knit up at a bit more of a worsted weight gauge because it does appear to be like a really lofty cozy woolen spun yarn now this yarn in particular this is the colorway earth and i hope you can see maybe i need to grab a different skein it's this lovely like heathered medium gray but it's got these warm toned tweedy bits and this like ochre color sort of throughout it. It doesn't seem to be a really heavy tweed, but it's a beautiful yarn. And I thought this yarn would be absolutely amazing for just like a daily wear, super easy, like the ultimate staple crew neck drop shoulder, better than a sweatshirt type of sweater. Now, when I started looking at all of the different patterns for drop shoulder sweaters that are available on Ravelry, I sort of noticed that you know, all of the, or many of the big designers, um, namely like Petite Knit, My Favorite Things Knitwear, Ozetta, Kadri, like all of these designers have their version or sometimes multiple versions of these staple types of sweaters, the drop shoulder, the raglan, etc. And so it really got me thinking about what about these sweaters is similar? What about these sweaters is different? Um, and what particular design features are leading me to pick one iteration of a really classic type of sweater over another. Now I talk about intentionality in yarn selections, color selections, pattern selections, intentionality and mindfulness in knitting in general. So I thought this could be a fun little video to sort of talk through a bunch of the different patterns that I considered. Um, mind you, most of these are going to be from bigger designers, but if you think there's any designers um, or patterns that are lesser known that I ought to consider, do, you know, give me your vote or link me to these patterns in the comments. I'd love to see them. Um, but yeah, the plan is just to sort of talk through a whole bunch of these different patterns today. But before we get into the sweater patterns, I do want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Merit Beauty. Now you've probably heard me talk about Merit Beauty a couple of times, but today I want to tell you about their one and only sale of the year, which is their Black Friday sale. Early access to the sale is going to start on November 21st, and the sale is going to run all the way until November 28th, so you have lots of time to make your picks. All of their individual products will be 20% off, but they're also going to have daily doorbusters for some of their most popular sets, which is probably going to include what I'm wearing today, which is their base set. In my opinion, the knockout product in the base set is their skincare product, which is Great Skin. It's a bi-phase serum that you sort of shake up and you pat into the skin when it's clean, no other products are on yet, and it's got niacinamide and caffeine. And these are two skincare ingredients that I was already using and already loving because they're amazing for smoothing and brightening out the skin. Even though Great Skin sets me up with a wonderful base, I do also use The Minimalist, which is Merit's concealer slash foundation hybrid. I wear the colorway linen so that it's light enough to go under my eyes, but is still also a close enough match uh, to go sort of around my mouth and my nose where I get most of my redness. And then for a little flush of warmth, I do love using the Bronze Balm. I'm wearing the color Quince, which is the lightest color, which I think is perfect for the fall slash winter season so that, you know, I still have a little bit of color, but I don't look like aggressively tanned or anything like that. And of course, I always have my brows done, 
even if I'm not wearing any other makeup. So the brow 1980 like little spoolie gel has been holding up so so great. My brows stay in place. I have really long eyebrow hairs so I've been really loving that product as well. Merit's products have really simplified my makeup routine. I can get it done in less than five minutes, no problem, but they're so fabulous because they are really lightweight and natural looking and leave my skin feeling super hydrated. And I feel like that's so important going into fall and winter here in Canada because it does get really cold and it does get really dry. So. I feel like my skin's really well taken care of. If you are interested in shopping any of Merit's products in their Black Friday sale, I do have a link for you in the description box below. All of their orders over 40 USD do ship for free. And if it's your first time placing an order, you'll also receive their signature bag, which is this adorable mustardy ochre colored corduroy bag. I'm still using it as a project bag. I absolutely love it. So thank you, Merit, so much for sponsoring today's video and keeping me looking fresh and cute. And with that, we're gonna jump into the sweater patterns. Now, the first two patterns that I want to talk about are My Favorite Things knitwear patterns. The first one is a much older pattern from her, and it's sweater number 14. Now, sweater number 14 is a really interesting sweater because of the gauge that it's knit at. The pattern calls for sport weight yarn and two strands of lace to give you a bulky gauge when it's knit really really loosely so this sweater has a really oversized and relaxed feel to it it's also got very minimal sleeve shaping and really wide chunks of ribbing another design feature that i find really interesting about sweater number 14 is that it has this high low split hem i feel like it's hard to do a really nice and clean split hem in knitting, or at least when I've attempted to do it, it hasn't turned out great. But I think for a sweater that's meant to be really easy and oversized, having the split hem can really help that bottom of the sweater skim over the body really nicely. Some issues with sweater number 14, however, are the yarns that the sweater calls for. You know, to knit a sweater with two strands of lace and also having that sport weight yarn in there to have the yarn you need for the project to come out exactly as hers has you're going to be investing a lot of money and you know my thinking process is that if I'm comparing all of these different sweater patterns I want to make the fewest modifications possible I want to pick the pattern that you know, checks the most boxes for me. So to take out that significant two strands of lace mohair in this pattern, I feel like would completely change the overall silhouette and the way the garment drapes over the body, the way the fabric moves and feels. Um, so I'd be reluctant to pick this pattern for that reason, but also because there's a really, really, really limited size range. For this particular pattern. My favorite things knitwears come under heat from the knitting community quite a bit lately because of some limited size options that a lot of her patterns have. This one in particular has sizes one, two, three. And I think that even, you know, as somebody who does fall in that size range that's offered from what I've heard other knitters say, um, because the sizing is so limited, even if you fall within that range, it can be hard to pick the right sweater size for you. Um, so knitter beware in that case, I suppose. However, the other My Favorite Things knitwear pattern I want to talk about does have better sizing. She recently put out sweater number 23, which aesthetically is supposed to be like a hybrid of some of her other really popular sweaters. Sweater number 23 is knit in Lamana's Como Grande yarn at an Aran weight or an Aran gauge. It's 17 stitches per four inches on five millimeter needles. And this sweater's got a much better size range. 
This sweater goes from an extra small to a 4XL. And I think the final circumference at the bust is 66 inches for the largest size. So there's definitely a lot of improvement there over some of her previous sweater designs. Some of the other things that I really like about sweater number 23 um, are, again, the really nice oversized look of the sweater, but also that collar detail where you can sort of see a few stitches spaced between the collar and where the increases are being worked. I think that it gives it a really clean um, and nicely finished appearance. However, one of the things I don't quite like about sweater number 23 is that 17 stitch per four inch gauge. I feel like from the photos on the pattern page itself, and other photos I've seen from other knitters, something about the way that drop shoulder kind of the fabric folds around the underarm looks a little too bulky to me. And I don't know if it's because it needs more shaping or if the sleeves need some decreases worked in there. Um, even though this sweater has that like oversized feel, it also just looks a little too bulky for my preference. Because that gauge for the sweater number 23 is what's really throwing me off about sweater number 23, I looked at a different sweater that's knit in that same Lamana Como Grande yarn, but at a different gauge. So I'm talking about a recent October 2022 release from Kadri, and it is her Dartmoor sweater. Now this is a sweater that I came really, really close to testing. I love the effortless oversized look that it has. And I think that the gauge the Dartmoor is knit at just has more of a drape than the sweater number 23. And so if I look at sort of the stats on Ravelry, while sweater number 23 is knit at a 17 stitch per four inch gauge, the Dartmoor sweater is knit a needle size up, so we're on 5.5 millimeter needles, and the yarn is held with a lace weight silk mohair, so you're working at a 15 stitch per 20, 15 stitch per four inch. <laughs> it's hard to say. You're working at a 15 stitch per four inch gauge on the Dartmoor, and I, I think that difference in gauge is very much visible in the way the garment sits on the body and um, the way it folds around the shoulder. In terms of sizing, the Dartmoor sweater comes from an extra small to a 5XL with the largest finished circumference being 68 and a quarter inches at the 5XL. One of the features of the Dartmoor that sets it apart from the other sweaters in this category is the lateral braid detail that follows the back of the shoulder. Not only is it just a really subtle but very classy detail. I imagine that having that lateral braid in there, um, I'm calling it a lateral braid, I actually don't know how the technique is worked, um, but I think it can possibly help keep the structural integrity of that seam or of that spot where the back and the fronts of the sweaters are joined because that is going to be one of the places where the fabric is under most tension because it's got the most fabric below it being weighed down by gravity. One of the features I don't particularly love about the Dartmoor sweater is the collar. It doesn't look like it's double folded to me and in some of the pattern photos, it does look like the collar kind of ripples or bags a bit around the neck. Now, you know, as I mentioned, you can make modifications and to do a double folded collar instead would be a really simple modification. Um, I think Laura from Penrose Knits test knit this sweater and she did that modification. But um, as I said, you know, wanting to knit the pattern as true to written as possible, I would want to either make that folded collar modification or be really mindful of yarn choice and picking a yarn that is not going to 
bag out or stretch out too much over time, I'd look for something that really holds its shape well. The next sweater I want to talk about is the Towns sweater by Ozetta or Haley Smedley. Now the town sweater is knit at a worsted weight gauge. She's used Durer Miniatures Gilead and we're looking again at a 17 stitch per four inch gauge on five millimeter needles. This sweater goes from extra small to 5XL and the finished bust circumference for the largest size is 68 inches. The town sweater is another sweater with a really relaxed look and feel to it. I think one of the most common things I look for in a sweater pattern is a really easygoing, sort of easy to throw on kind of appearance. But what sets this town sweater apart from the other patterns is its really dramatic ribbed details. It's got a tall ribbed collar that's kind of like a mock neck more than a turtleneck, uh, but certainly not crew neck and both the sleeves and the hem have what looks to be like 14 to 20 centimeters of ribbing with minimal shaping overall. I think those really large ribbed sections go a long way for adding visual interest and giving the sweater a nice contemporary look while still keeping it super super cozy. I think this sweater would look amazing in a yarn like this BC Garn, something that is more of like a rustic, really lofty, super wooly feel. However, I think that if I'm looking for something that is good for everyday wear, I wouldn't go for something with as much rib as the town sweater has because um, and pretty much only because I like to tuck my sweaters into the waists of my pants or my skirts or whatever bottom that I'm wearing. And I think that having that much of a ribbed section would make it hard to do that like half tuck where it's just tucked at the front or just tucked at the side. I think the town sweater would be a really, really good option though if you're looking for something to layer over something like a pair of leggings because I think proportionally because you have that really long ribbing you can sort of extend the sweater a bit longer to sort of cover yourself up if that's what you want. The next sweater pattern that I've been looking at is the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit. The Marseille sweater is an absolute stunner. I think that the nautical stripes are super, super clean looking and really enhanced by the yarn choice that she's used. Um, the Marseille sweater is knit in Double Sunday from Sennes Garn, which is like a high twist, 100% wool yarn. It doesn't really have a lot of fluffiness to it or anything like that, but it does appear to be like a really solid, really crisp and clean looking sweater yarn. Now I like the Marseille sweater because it is a mohairless option that's knit at a DK weight gauge. And as I said, you know, if I'm looking for a sweater to knit, I want to make as few modifications as possible. So I really like that I could probably work my regular size, maybe at the exact gauge, but possibly get, I don't know, maybe a bigger gauge and possibly get a slightly more oversized looking sweater, leave out the stripes. Um, that's a modification I'm okay to make. Um, I just, I appreciate that it's a mohair free option. However, in a yarn like this, going mohair free, I don't think is any issue at all. But I would say if you are taking a sweater that typically does have mohair and you're knitting it without mohair, I'm going to caution you because some of the details of the sweater um, or some of the techniques of the sweater may be more or less obvious depending on whether or not you have that mohair. For example, I'm thinking of something like German short rows, which are often used around like shoulder caps or to shape sort of these front portions of sweaters. And if you're not using mohair, 
where you've done your double stitches for the German short rows are going to be a lot more obvious than when you have just like the fluff of mohair to obscure any technical inconsistencies um, or, or differences, differences in fabric that result from different kinds of shaping techniques like short rows, like increases, like decreases, etc. Oh, I think the Marseille sweater in, in this yarn would turn out beautifully, but if you were to do the Marseille sweater in like just a super wash merino, I, I'd caution you to like pay attention to how consistent your gauge is, how your technique looks. I'm sure a lot of it would block out, um, but that's just something I think about with a sweater as, as crispy looking as the Marseille. One other detail about the Marseille that I'm a little stuck on actually is the collar. As I already said, I think the collar can make or break the way the finished product looks. Um, and you'll notice that in a lot of the pattern photos on Ravelry, she's wearing a scarf. So you can't really see much of what's going on around that collar. Um, but in one of the photos, and in a lot of other photos I've seen of the Marseille sweater being worn by other knitters, it looks again like this, the collar doesn't sit on or around the neck as close as I would want it to. It looks like, especially at the back of the neck, it sort of stands up or away from the neck a little bit, which could be corrected possibly with elastic I don't know if the pattern tells you to do that or not, um, but it is something that has honestly prevented me from purchasing yarn for this pattern and purchasing this pattern when I was really close to doing so in the past. The last pattern that I want to tell you about is the Dear Duomo sweater by Sung Hee Hong. Now this is a DK weight sweater that's knit with a strand of fingering and a strand of mohair, but it's knit on 4.5 millimeter needles. Now the other projects that I have knit with fingering plus mohair, I think I've only ever knit at a four millimeter needle. So I'd be really curious to see, you know, what the gauge of this kind of sweater would turn out like. It does come in nine sizes and the largest size has a finished bust circumference of 67 inches. So we're pretty good in terms of size inclusivity again. I included this sweater because it's got a different construction from some of the other sweaters. I know a lot of petite knits drop shoulder patterns are knit with like a rectangle for the back and then you pick up for each shoulder and then connect in the round at the underarms. But the Dear Duomo is knit from the bottom up and then the shoulders are joined with a three needle bind off, which is a technique that I really like. I think the three needle bind off is good for drop shoulder sweaters, especially because um, as I mentioned, I think with the Dartmoor sweater, having sort of more gravity, not more gravity, but having more fabric weighing down sort of this top area of the shoulder, the three needle bind off is going to add a lot of structural integrity to that seam, even compared to picking up stitches from a cast on edge and especially picking up stitches from a provisional cast on edge. A few other details I really like about this Dear Duomo sweater are, of course, it's got like this nice relaxed fit look to it. I do think this is probably the most classic fitting of all of the patterns I've shown you today. And when I say classic, what I mean is the least amount of positive ease. Um, but it does look like it's got really thoughtful construction uh, to achieve a nice clean and, and classic fit. It appears that the shoulders are knit to be a little sloped to follow sort of the natural the natural slope of a shoulder. And it, it also looks like the Dear Duomo has some sleeve shaping toward the wrist to really help again with that tailored look. 
Similarly to the Dear Duomo is the Stockholm Sweater by Petite Knit. I won't spend too much time on this pattern though because it is so similar to the Dear Duomo, but I do think that the Stockholm Sweater is one of the patterns that Petite Knit actually revisited when she was going back through to extend the size ranges for some of her patterns. So that's also an option, but Again, I because I am looking for more of that oversized look, probably not going to go for the Stockholm sweater and probably not going to go for the Dear Duomo, but they both have like really lovely tailored clean looks to them. So those are all the patterns that I wanted to talk through today. I think where I'm at right now is probably leaning closer towards the Dartmoor sweater by Kadri with a modification for the folded collar. However, there is also a pattern that I hope there will be a test call for soon, also from Ozetta Knitwear. Um, it's got a really similar looking silhouette to the sweater number 23 because it has some really lovely shaping around the collar. It does have a high ribbed neck which I would probably shorten and fold over but one of the really striking features about this pattern that has not been named and is also not in testing yet um, is this really neat looking ribbed feature at the drop shoulder which ties in the ribbing at the collar and presumably the ribbing that will be on the cuffs and the hem. So I might wait to see if a test call comes for that soon. I do have a raglan sweater that I want to finish before I cast on with this but I'm very much looking forward to having like a neutral gray super staple sweater. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to these rambles. Please do let me know if you have a particular sweater you want to vote for or if there's one I didn't talk about that you think I should check out or if you want to see me do this again, but for different pattern categories like saddle shoulders, raglans, camisoles even, um, I think, you know, I spend a lot of time picking patterns before I knit them. So it's fun just to like reflect and talk through those reflections. And thank you so much to Merit for sponsoring today's video. Once again, if you're interested in shopping their one and only sale of the year for Black Friday, all of that information, including my link, will be in the description box for you. So until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.